Hi, thank you for joining me for the five minute PGX Clinical Pearl. Today I'm going to be talking about the gene SLC6A4. It's a transporter that's on the presynaptic cell. So kind of let me orient you to, or to the space right here. So this is the presynaptic cell. This is the synaptic cleft in the middle and the postsynaptic cell. So what happens when a serotonin is actually made is stored in these vesicles and it's released through these SLC6A4 transporters. In, out into the synaptic cleft and also and then afterwards it's attached to its receptors on the postsynaptic cell where it um, creates um, an action. So when it's no longer needed it's picked back up by um, transporters back into these uh, vesicles for when it's needed next time. So it's kind of really a nice balance of a cycle uh, when it's used and then when it's unused it's stored. So so in this scenario, this is kind of quote unquote normal. When a patient is diagnosed with depression out in the middle, in the middle a diagram right here, you see there's not enough serotonin out in this space. And so what happens when a patient is on an SSRI or selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, these um, transporters are blocked. So serotonin is not picked back up to be stored back into the vesicle, but more out, staying out in the synaptic space where with that serotonin, the person feels um, better and feels good. So this is how an SSRI works, such as like Prozac. So if we think about them, actually, it's easier to kind of go back up to the um, quote unquote normal. Uh, if a patient has a variant of the SLC64 that's short, that means these receptors, I know it only shows two on here. However, there are more transporters on the synaptic cell. But so this, the individual with their short bit um, allele, they don't have enough of these transporters in the synap in the presynaptic cell and to be able to pick up the serotonin back into the presynaptic cell and into the vesicle. And also they're shorter. So kind of more simplistically, they're not long enough to pick up the serotonins out in the space out here. So they're going to look like or appear like there are, are they are already on an SSRI because they have a lot more serotonin out in the space for versus quote unquote normal. So adding um, an SSRI for these individuals may not be beneficial for them because it appears they already on SSRI and also they're not going to see a lot of the effects of SSRI but more the side effect profile because now we're actually increasing the serotonin levels. So how this plays out in the PGX report when we see that is knowing the power of combining the different genes, we have to be able to make a clinical decision because as we know, PGX is just a small piece of the puzzle giving us another tool to use. So when we're looking at, for example, an SSRI in this example, we not only should be looking at SLC6A4, we, and also 2C19, 2D6, and all these combination to make a clinical judgment instead of just this pharmacodynamic gene. Thanks for joining me and tune in next time where we talk about another gene.